So, the companion to Neil Adams' the DC years would be an alter ego, the comic artist, well, it's a comic artist issue, but the backup would be alter ego. Neil Adams, the Marvel years, right? So this is going to be an overview by Neil and Alan Schumer talking about the times when he was at Marvel, right? And it talks about the wacky visionaries in the lab, which had the soft sort of um, terrible printing. So they redid that for this Neil Adams visionaries, keeping that same cover you saw on this comic book artist, recolored. I think it's recolored, right? Corey Adams did the color for the cover, right? So they redid that into a nice volume. And um, so this was complaining about that. You get another Neil picture there. Some astonishing tales. Then he talks about the graphic novel that I don't think was ever published. It's about two guys in a bar talking about the fact that Earth growing. Neil Adams doing the man the man thing, All right? Oh, and this one's interesting. They coming in Fantino writing back to the the article where it's a lot of things, I think a lot of times now, no one's here to rebut stuff that's said in these articles. You know, while the people were alive, they would come back and they would, um, you know, point things out, right? So, and this would be no different. Carmen Infantino rebutting stuff that was in the comic book artist, right? And on the other side, you got Stan Lee. Congratulating on the issue, too. <laughs> uh, so here we go, right? So this isn't the beautiful color edition like um, the um, comic book marketplace, but it's still printed pretty well, right? So we get some nice effect. From the, this comic, from the X Men comic book, so we get the nice splash page. And I always say this shows you what you should do with Angel is just make sure, in you know, it looks beautiful on the page. That's really the key to the character, is getting that, and making sure he looks good on camera. And this is the original cover to X Men Fifty Six, Neil's first cover, but at the same time. Martin Goodman saw it and said, we can't read the logo. No kids will buy it. So he rejected it, and then Neil redid the shot, right? And then I think a lot of people have redone this in different ways. I think Byrne has redone it a few times. I think one time. And then I think um, John Romita Jr. put the X-Men on top of the logo at the same time. So it's a cool effect to sort of throw back to what Neil did. And this one of the classic pages, he's talking about what he would do differently and he possibly would turn the page around so, um, you know, Hank's head would be here. So the this would be up top and Hank's head would be here. But, you know, as, as it is, I wouldn't fix it. I would keep it as this for comics as they say. Kirby and John, John Bosin would say it's good enough for comics, right? This would be his sketch into his real drawing. Ink by him. No sketch. Then he'd pencil it, and then it would go to Tom Palmer, right? This is close to what it would be. I keep pulling out. I, have, I don't have 
it close by, so I'm not gonna try to search for it in black and white, but I showed it before. Then the design for Havoc, which is a solid black. No, don't not supposed to see any muscular sure in there and the original design for angel's new costume we did the first one, the, the new one which was um red and black but then he updated to the the white and black one too right and this cool effect for havoc's power all right so here we get a chance to see neil's pencils tom palmer's inks all right see how faithful he was to it and some of the different effects. I think Byrne has used that before in the hidden years when you saw Rome. Right, and Tom Palmer talks about um, inking it and I think he also colored it. Right, there's Tom Palmer right there. And this is a quiet sequence, which was, which um, Neil wrote in there. I think he did the right pretty, but um, what's the name? Um, Roy Thomas decided to not use any sort of um, dialogue for the scene. And here, this was sort of like a like a four-legged type of alien, and of course, Marvel didn't like that, so they turned it into a um, big, you know, humanoid monster. Right? They did the same thing. Chopped up the cover too. Right? So. He was doing stuff with Stan, so he tried to do like a classic, like a Kirby and and Senna type of deal. So he did, um, and I think somewhere in here, and I don't think Stan like um, Stan's um, Neil Adams covers, so they had other artists do it. I think somewhere in there. Um, Neil wrote right pretty Stan and Stan was not happy and talk, had a talking to him with that but see sometimes you wouldn't think of this as even homage but it's kind of taking some of the classic shots and and updating them in some way and then seeing how a different Inca works on the stuff we've seen all the stuff that looks amazing and then we have John Burporton doing it and there's nothing as strong right so then we had with the title, what he wanted it to be. Three cows shot me down, and it became this beachhead earth. And then we have um, some roughs, some pencils, and some inks by Tom Palmer. Uh, so that's a good example of how he works. All right, so we move from X-Men to Inhumans, to Avengers, right? And then the humans show up in the Avengers. Then he also worked on War of the Worlds comic that was an amazing Avengers. And then some Conan, right? This, I don't know if this came out, I'm not sure. It says the tribe. All right. And Dracula lives again. And this is for the magazine. All right, this is a gorgeous page. Look at that. And to wrap it up, they get the checklist of all Neil's work. This is one of the cool things about this magazine. You get the checklist of all sorts. Oh, so this is going to be great, right? So you get this checklist in this issue, and this would be just because I didn't say it before. Comic book artist number three. You can probably get this online at um, tomorrows.com. That's T O morrows.com. They have the Kirby Collector, comic book artist, ton of different issues. But this is the project that's yet to come out. Right? So Neil talking about his graphic novel on the the original the Earth with two guys talking in the bar. Right? And they talk about the possibility of Earth growing over time because of the heat and whatnot. You can see 
There's two couple guys talking, but that's one of the things when they looked at it. And the other thing was the emotion. They have actually facial expressions that you can see. I think Bernie kind of pulled this over, but I think Kevin Maguire, he is somewhat the best at it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a project I always wanted to get if it came out. And before it was ever sent out, this would be the art for, it's supposedly say God loves men kills, but it feels like Neil had a pretty much free hand to draw whatever he wanted. Because he had the saying all around town, he had a X-Men project he was doing that he wanted Terry Austin to ink. But Terry, knowing Neil, was like, I want to be somewhere else so Neil can't look at it and say what I did wrong. So... Right, so, but as ultimately, he also didn't want Neil to sign him up on the job. He wanted Marvel to make sure Marvel approved it. So it wasn't something where Neil said it, and the next thing you know, two months later, they have someone else on the job. So make sure it was done officially. So that was, that was um, Terry Austin's other apprehension. When I saw this, I fell out. I was like, this could have eclipsed like everything from the X-Men at this period, right? And I do think Brent Anderson is a great artist. He also is in Neil Adams' vein. But it would have been really great to get a um, Neil Adams X-Men graphic novel, right? He was doing that X-Men right around when Kitty got there. All right. And um, this fell apart, I guess, because... Neil didn't want to sign a work for hire agreement. Jim Shooter said, yeah, that's no problem. And then at some point he wrote, called him back and said, uh, no, we can't do it. I don't think we're going to be able to work on it. And we have someone else already lined. It's already on schedule. He's like, what? And here's the pages. And he said, Shooter saw it. said, nice, but we can't do it. All right. So I guess that's it, right? I think I gave you all my Neil Adams stuff in here. the sketchbook I have the sketchbook don't I all right that's another thing you should get right so there you go we gave you the comic artist the companion to Neil Adams the DC years right spin rack out